Hello everyone, my name is Abigail Hernandez. I received my undergraduate degree in kinesiology in 2021, and I am currently working on my occupational therapy doctoral degree at the University of St. Augustine for Health Sciences. Today, I will be presenting how to improve your overall physical health through scar tissue massage, diaphragmatic breathing, and range of motion exercises. I wanted to focus on these topics because I know that many breast cancer survivors may have gone through surgery, experienced high amounts of stress, and may have even lost their ability to move their bodies due to general weakness. During this presentation, I will give you insightful information as well as demonstrate how to perform some of these techniques. So first, I am going to talk about the importance of scar tissue massage and how you can do it yourself in the comfort of your own home. It is important to treat our scars and massaging is a great way to do that. Massaging your surgical, surgical scars can release the tension between the tissues, keeping it flexible so that you can move comfortably throughout the day. It can also promote collagen remodeling. This is important because collagen makes, makes up the skin on our body. It is also the structure and when we have surgical procedure done, that collagen in that area is actually being broken down. So therefore, by massaging our scars, we are rebuilding the collagen that was lost. Another important point that is uh, to bring up is it decreases itching. This is normal during the healing process. However, it is better that you massage your scars when it is itching rather than scratching it because it is in the sensitive and healing stage. And finally, the last point to bring up is that massaging will help flatten the scar surface. If the scar is not massaged, the surface can raise, causing it to feel uncomfortable, um, putting clothes over it, or also restrict movement. So this is very, very crucial. So before I explain how to massage your scar, I would like to say that it is important to wait until after the skin has healed properly before you start to massage. Some things to look for are no gaps within the scar, no drainage or liquid should be coming out of your scar, and also the color of your skin around the scar should be back to normal. If you are unsure, speaking with your doctor prior to doing this would also be beneficial. Another thing I would like to say that is super helpful when massaging your scar is not massaging on dry skin. Instead, you could use lotion, oils, ser serums, stuff like that that will help your fingertips and hands glide easily. That would be very helpful. So let's move on on how to massage your scars. There are different ways you can do it. The first way is the towards the scar method. This is just like it sounds. So first, you're gonna place your, your fingertips above or below, it does not matter, on the scar. With light to moderate pressure, whatever feels comfortable to you, push your fingers towards the scar. However, we are not going over the scar, we are just pu pushing towards the scar. Then we are going to hold for a couple of seconds, and I would suggest five to 10 seconds, then repeat the same movement. And I would suggest doing this 10 to 15 repetitions. So now this is the back and forth method. Um, this, so we are going to place your finger flat again on the scar and provide light to moderate pressure. Then we are going to pass over the scar going back and forth. So this one we are actually going across the scar. And we're gonna go back and forth but also applying pressure for five seconds. And I would recommend doing this about 10 to 15 repetitions as well. Finally, the last technique, which is the circular technique, you're going to place your fingers flat above again, providing light to moderate pressure, and you're going to press and move along the length of the scar in circular motions. You want to move from end to end. As you're moving in circular motions, feeling the tissue move beneath your fingertips, you should really start to feel 
the tissue breaking up and moving. So this is, uh, those are the three techniques. I also provided on this slide a QR link if you'd like to scan it. It'll take you directly to a YouTube video on how to perform a scar tissue massage. So now we are going to go over diaphragmatic breathing. What is diaphragmatic breathing? Diaphragmatic breathing is an exercise technique to help strengthen your diaphragm and fill your lungs with air more efficiently. It is also based on research, research diaphragmatic breathing is known to reduce anxiety, depression, and even stress. With that being said, that leads me to why diaphragmatic breathing is important and how it can serve you today. So first, diaphragmatic breathing can increase our energy. It can reduce our blood pressure and heart rate. Like I mentioned before, it can reduce our anxiety, depression, and stress by allowing us to just really focus on our breathing and meditate. It can also help us relax and help the flow of fluid throughout our body, which is essential for us to function. So when you are feeling stressed or anxious, or maybe have an increase in heart rate and blood pressure, you can do diaphragmatic breathing. However, I would like to advise that you should not participate in diaphragmatic breathing if you have shortness of breath or asthma. But once again, please talk to your doctor about participating in activity like this. So let's get started. So for this technique, it is going to be seated. You wanna sit comfortably with your knees bent and your shoulders, head and neck relaxed. You're gonna place one hand on your upper chest and the other just below your rib cage. This will allow you to feel your diaphragm move as you breathe. So first, you're gonna breathe in slowly through your nose so that your stomach moves against your hand. The hand on your chest should remain still at all times. The only hand that is moving is the one on your diaphragm. So you're gonna tighten your stomach muscles so that your stomach moves back in and out as you inhale and exhale. So we're gonna inhale through our nose, feeling the hand on our diaphragm move outwards away from our body. Then exhale through our lips, feeling our hand on our diaphragm move back in with our stomach. You would like, you should perform this um, activity at least five to 10 times throughout the day. Now this technique is exactly the same, however, this is laying down. So you're gonna find a nice, comfortable position. Lay down, you're gonna relax your shoulders, shifting them down away from your ears. Then you're gonna again, put your hand on your chest and the other hand on your stomach. You're gonna inhale through your nose, feeling that hand pushing out away from your stomach and exhaling, feeling the hand coming back towards your body. And again, you would want to repeat this several times, feeling that stress leave your body, feeling more relaxed, bringing you back to a steady state. So we went over what diaphragmatic breathing is, why it is important, and how to perform it in various positions. So again, on this slide, I have included a QR link that you, you can scan and it'll take you directly to a YouTube video and it'll teach you how to do breathing techniques, how to relax, and that is a resource for you. Finally, we're going to talk about range of motion. Range of motion is different for each of us. Range of motion is how far you can move or stretch a part of your body. For example, there are some people that can do complete split splits, but others cannot, like myself. And it is because some people have joints that are looser than others or their muscles won't lengthen as far. So each of us have our own unique range of motion. However, the best thing about range of motion is that it can always be worked on and improved. And it's important for us to do that. By working on a range of motion, you can improve your flexibility and mobility. You can also um, help regain movement, build and strengthen your muscles, avoid and decrease future injuries, and improve your overall physical health. 
So that leads me to these exercises. I am going to show you various ways to improve your range of motion and just get a good stretch from head to toe. Starting from the top of our head and necks, I would like you to sit comfortably and then we're going to head tilt to the right. And you should really feel a stretch on each side of your neck and maybe hold for about five to 10 seconds and then move to the left. Really feeling that stretch on each side. Holding for five to 10 seconds and then coming back. If you would like more of a stretch, feel free to grab your other hand and pull against your head to really increase that range of motion along your neck and feeling that stretch. Now moving on to the head tilts, you're gonna hit, sit up straight, looking up to the sky Feeling that stretch in the front of your neck, holding for a couple of seconds. Then looking down to the floor, feeling the stretch in the back of your neck. This is important to stretch our neck and our head because we use our necks every day and everything that we do throughout work, throughout on texting on our phones. So it is important to stretch our head and neck. Now moving on to shoulders. We are gonna shrug our shoulders up, squeezing them at the top for a couple of seconds, then releasing them. I would recommend repeating these exercises for about 10 to 15 repetitions. If you are an overachiever, go for 20. The next one is gonna be pullback method. So you're gonna use, you're gonna bring your shoulders and pull them back, feeling that squeeze in the back of your muscles. Squeezing for a couple of seconds and then bringing them back and then repeating the same process. Moving on to the roll forward and back method. You're going to roll forward for 10 repetitions. Really feeling that stretch in your shoulders and your trapezius muscles, which are on the top here. Then you're going to move backwards. Perfect. Now we're going to move on to moving our arm up and back. So you're going to bring it up just like so. Try to move it as far back as possible. If not, it's okay. We are here to increase our range of motion and our overall physical health. Once you hold a couple seconds, then you can bring it on back and hold a couple seconds as well. You should really feel a good stretch in that shoulder. There you go. And now we're going to move it to our, the side and then overhead. It's important to raise, do raise overhead exercises like this because when we need to reach over, grab something in the cabinets, we need that range of motion. So this is a great exercise. The next exercise is a reach across. So you're going to bring your arm across your body, getting that good stretch. You can also use your other hand to bring it across and bring that stretch even more. And again, hold for a couple seconds. I would also like to mention if you do it on the right, um, the right side, also do your left. Do not neglect any of the sides. Every part of your body is important and needs a good stretch. Now, this is to uh, stretch the hips and knees. You can do it laying down or standing. If you struggle with your balance, I would recommend laying down. But for this exercise, you're going to bring your knee and hip up to your chest. If you need more assistance, feel free to uh, clasp your hands together and then hold it against your knee. Bring your knee up to your chest and hold. And again, you're going to hold for a couple of seconds, feeling that stretch in your knee and hips, increasing your range of motion. Then you're going to relax, bring it down, and then repeat the process on both sides. Now moving down to the ankles, I recommend that you uh, sit while doing this exercise, but you're going to move your ankle in circular motions. This can be in uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. 
you're still going to get the same effect. But I would recommend doing this 20 repetitions. So you're going to move your ankle and really feel that ankle just popping and cracking, which is all good. Sometimes they get stiff. They create tension because we're on our feet all day. So it's important to release that tension. Then moving on to ankle up and downs, which is also known as ankle pumps. You're going to bring it up to the ceiling and then down, like if you're stepping on a gas pedal. And repeat that motion for, again, like I said, 20 repetitions. So those were some exercises that you can do from head to toe to increase your range of motion and just release some of the tension that, that you build up throughout your day. Again, here I provided a link so you can scan a QR code. It'll take you directly to a YouTube video on how to perform and improve your full body range of motion. So that concludes the video for today. I want to thank you all for for selecting my video and I hope it serves you well and it actually improves your overall physical health.